right, I'm just gonna jump in today. <laughs> I have already messed up this video. I don't like wasting time. I don't like wasting your time. I don't like wasting my time. I already recorded this entire video. I'm so mad at myself. Sometimes this is why I don't even edit. I don't like wasting time. I, I like I cut off the beginning of my video. I cut off the end of my video, and that's pretty much it. I'm not good at adding like all this stuff, and that, that it just I'm not good at it. Um, and I just recorded this entire video already, but as I was going through it, I realized near the end of it, like, hey, Danny, uh, you're dumb. Like, why did you do this? You are, this was, this is, it was a repetitive slide. I repeated a slide that had the, all the wrong information in it. I had to go up. I had to redo the, the design of the slide. And this is an important video. This is a good video. This is a good one. I wasted so one time I actually calculated how long it took me to tie my shoes so that way I could determine if it was worth it to continue to buy shoes that have ties on them because I calculated that it took two days it was going to take two days of my life tying shoes uh and I do, this is how dumb I oh my goodness uh, uh does anybody else not tie shoes anymore I'm just done with it I'm done tying shoes I don't want to do it anymore it's a waste of my time I got better things to do than tie shoes I am not not this is this is great content. This is good content right here, everybody. We're going to talk about pull rates in this video uh, because we talked about them on Friday. If you have not watched Friday's video, I highly recommend going back and watching it. It is so important. Calculating the rarity of cards, calculating the pull rates on Pokemon cards uh, with Scarlet and Violet as they're attributed to Scarlet and Violet because something changed in Scarlet and Violet. And I'm trying to understand and get in the head of Pokemon and be like, hey, Pokemon, why did you change pull rates? And then I figured it out, I think. I calculated that in Obsidian Flames, with the variance uh, of the amount of regular arts, the amount of double rares that there are, there's like 15 of them in the set or something like that, based off of pull rate data, uh, that X amount of packs is how much it takes to open up a singular uh, double rare, a singular regular art. It could be Charizard, it could be Greedent, it could be Glamora, it could be anything. Uh, with the variance factor, it is more difficult, it will take you more booster packs to pull a specific and unique double rare in obsidian flames than it will to pull a hyper rare so you could uh theoretically open up uh packs until you have a master set and you will most likely fill all of your hyper rares prior to filling all of your regular arts uh which is crazy to me crazy thing about so i think pokemon was like hold the phone for a second we got to change things up uh secret rares are supposed to be more difficult to pull than regular arts than double rares than cards that are in the actual set so i think they change it up that's why you see a difference in paradox rift that's why you see a big difference starting with temporal forces and into twilight masquerade but then it really got got me in the lab and, and cooking and thinking like well what about trainer gallery we've seen a lot a lot of movements in the Pokemon card market, specifically when it comes to alternate arts and even the Trainer Gallery. The Trainer Gallery has seen like some epic rises from a lot of cards like the Umbreon V and Umbreon V Max from Brilliant Stars, the Sylveon V, the Sylveon V Max from Lost Origin. We saw the Pikachu V and the Pikachu V Max shoot up. Uh, Astral Radiance, we saw the Garchomp, we saw the Starmie, those shot up from uh, Silver Tempest, the Rayquaza VMAX shot up, and even now the Blaziken VMAX is also uh, shooting up like crazy. So I thought, okay, well, what, are these rare? Are these harder to pull? Uh, because the Trainer Gallery was one of the best things Pokemon did. Like, that was a great inclusion in sets. Obviously, getting the amount of pulls that we got really good in, in the Sword and Shield era. So you get seven to eight hits per booster box all the way up until Brilliant Stars. Then they added in in these trainer gallery cards uh, but they didn't take away from the pull rates of the set the trainer gallery was a subset that was included which was like bonus pulls it was just like additional pulls it made you feel like you were getting more bang for your buck and that's not even including uh the galarian gallery so i like how rare are these cards i'm gonna flip you guys around and stop rambling so you can see exactly what i'm talking about but this is the data that we talked about on friday uh, basically this breaks down pull rates uh based off of rarity so uh illustration rares special illustration rares and hyper rares uh the amount amount of packs that it takes to pull a specific and unique individual card. So for Paradox Rift, for example, if you really want to pull that Groudon illustration, or it should take you 442 packs to do it. Now this is average, and I can't emphasize enough how important it is to understand that this is average. You might open up 442 packs and not pull a single Groudon. You could pull multiple Steelix, you could pull multiple of a different illustration, rare, or you could pull multiple copies of that Groudon, but on average, based off of pull rate data, 442 packs is how much it should take in order to pull specific 
unique and unique individual illustration rares. That is the, by far the rarest of all of them. That, that's because of the variance factor. That's because there's so many illustration rares in the set. There's like 35 or 36 illustration rares in the set. That's the biggest one we've had, uh, very close to what we had for Paldea Evolved. But if you look at a set like Obsidian Flames, which only has, I don't know, 11, 12, something like that illustration rares, uh, it takes you much less because you get uh, one out of every 12 packs, right? You get one out of every 12 booster packs, three per booster box of illustration rares. So 156 packs you should have just about all of the illustration rares from Obsidian Flames. You might have duplicates of some, uh, so you might be missing one, uh, but for the most part, a specific, unique, individual one will take you 156 packs in Obsidian Flames. Uh, for Temporal Forces, things change completely when it comes to special illustration rares. 780 packs to pull a specific and unique individual special illustration rares. Way different than the 204 that it took you from Obsidian Flames, or even the, the 405 it took you from Paldea Evolved. Now, Paldea Evolved had a lot of special illustration rares, but you got at least one per booster box, whereas Temporal Forces, all of a sudden everything changed. Less special illustration rares, uh, but you're not guaranteed to get one per booster box anymore. Same thing with Hyper Rares. So, I thought, okay, well, let's break this down and see how rare are these trainer gallery cards. So, for Scarlet and Violet Base, if you really want that Gardevoir, it's going to take you 270 packs in order to pull that special illustration rare Gardevoir on average. Now, you could open up 270 packs, you could pull two, or you could pull none, but on average, it's going to take you 270 packs. Well, how does that stack up to that Umbreon V uh, from the Trainer Gallery, that Umbreon V Max for the Trainer Gallery? And this is what I came up with. So, this data is extremely small. I apologize. I hope you can read it. If you can't read it, most likely you're probably just listening to this anyways. Uh, I will do my best to explain through it. So, I took all the trainer gallery sets brilliant stars uh astral radiance lost origin silver tempest and i broke everything down based off of pull rate data now it is important to remember that the trainer gallery is broken down into two parts so you have cards in the trainer gallery that are easier to pull the first half of the trainer gallery is easier to pull than the back half of the trainer gallery now you can find what these cards are based off of just their appearance so the front half of the trainer gallery does not have texturing it's just a smooth hollow foil pattern that's on it very smooth has the yellow border no hollow foil border or anything like that the back half of the trainer gallery that has texture to it it's got that hollow foil pattern on the border it's just very different than that front half and because of that we can tell and based off of pull rate data that the front half of the trainer gallery is easier to pull than the back half. So the way we have everything broken down, that first line, I know it's tough to read. Again, I apologize. It just says trainer gallery, quantity, and pull rate. And then we've got a list of every single trainer gallery card in Brilliant Stars, starting with Flareon, which is TG1, all the way through TG12, which is a Rangaroo. Those are all the easier ones to pull. And you can see, based off of our pull rate data, we pulled a significant amount more of all of those than the back half of the Trainer Gallery. Now, you should pull approximately 4 to 5, 4.33 Trainer Gallery cards per booster box of Brilliant Stars. Uh, but three of them uh, is going to be from that front half. So three of the four trainer gallery cards that you pull on average are going to come from that front half of the trainer gallery. Cards numbered TG1 through TG12, starting with Flareon all the way down to Oranguru. Once we get to the Bolton V of the set, the set that has, or the, the card that starts having a little bit of texturing, a little bit of that hollow foil border, all the way down to that black and gold rapid strike Urshifu V Max, those are a little bit more difficult to pull. You should pull one of those per booster box of Brilliant Stars, 1.27. And then we'll what we did is we calculated the amount of packs it takes you to pull any trainer gallery card. So for the front half of the trainer gallery, it takes you 11.73 packs in order to pull a trainer gallery card. Now it could be the Vaporeon, it could be the Zekrom, it could be the Denny, but it's going to take you 11.73 packs. So 12 packs, you should pull a card from the Brilliant Stars trainer gallery. If you're only looking for the back half of the trainer gallery, those cards that do have a little bit of texturing to them, that do have a little bit of that border to them, uh, it's going to take you 28 packs, 28.34 packs. And then what we did is we multiplied that times the amount of trainer gallery cards in that specific rarity group. So the front half of the trainer gallery, cards numbered TG1 through TG12, we know that there's 12 of those, right? We know that there's 12 of those in the set. So we take that and we multiply it times the amount of packs it takes you to pull any of them, which is 11.73, and we come up with a specific, unique, individual pull rate of 140.82. So 141 packs. If you are hunting and you say, hey, Fanny, I'm going to open up packs until I pull that Trainer Gallery Zekrom card, it should take you 141 packs to do so. It might take you less, it might take you more, but on average, it's going to take you 141 packs to find that specific Trainer Gallery card. Now, uh, the back half of the Trainer Gallery, we know 
that there's 18 of them, cards that are numbered TG13 through TG30. So 18 of them times the amount of packs it takes to open up any of them is 28.34. That means your pull rate for a specific and unique individual trainer gallery card from Brilliant Stars, the back half, is going to take you 510.12 booster packs. So basically 510 packs. If you want to open up the trainer gallery Umbreon VMAX, it is going to take you approximately, on average, 510 packs to do it. Now, out of 510 packs, you should pull 18 of the back half of the trainer gallery cards. It is extremely unlikely that you are going to pull perfect and that you are going to pull all of these individually. More than likely, you're going to pull duplicates of one or triplicates of one. So it's very important to remember that this is on average, it's going to take you approximately 510 packs to pull that specific uh, unique individual card. So uh, average pull rate for this rarity is looking like one out of every 510 packs. So if we compare that to what we just witnessed uh, with uh, all these Scarlet and Violet sets, 510 packs makes all the trainer gallery cards from Brilliant Stars more difficult to pull all the back half, I should, I, I want to make sure that I say that properly. All the back half of the trainer gallery cards from Brilliant Stars. So uh, this Bolton V, this Bolton V all the way down to the Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, all those cards are a little bit more difficult to pull uh, than every single illustration rare that's been printed. So uh, Paldea Evolved, Paradox Rift, that Groudon, uh, Paldea Evolved, that Magikarp, uh, which has a specific individual pull rate of about 1 out of 432 packs. It is more difficult uh, to pull a Cafe Master than it is to pull uh, that Magikarp. I think that's important to understand because that pricing is obviously indicative of a lot of different factors, right? Rarity is one of those factors, but obviously collectability plays a thing. I mean, the demand for Cafe Master is way less uh, than what you would have as far as demand goes for uh, the Magikarp. I think that's obvious. Like they, The artwork on the Magikarp is stunning. The demand for the Magikarp is way, way higher. And that the, obviously demand is what's really dictating uh, pricing outside of manipulation, buyouts, things like that. Obviously demand is what's really dictating. The, the, the demand can be uh, many different factors, right? It could be price involved. Obviously it's not just necessarily artwork as much as, it, as great as it would be if it was. Uh, that's not always the case, obviously. We've talked about that before as well as people see opportunities and they take advantage of it. But the, the Cafe Master, and the Gloria, for example, a little bit more difficult to pull uh, than all of the illustration rares that are out there, which is insane to me. Uh, Astral Radiance, kind of the same thing. You're still looking, I'm going to go through these a lot faster. Uh, Astral Radiance, you're still looking at about 4.47, so four hits per booster box when it comes to the trainer gallery. 3.11 of them coming from the front half, so uh, TG1 through TG11, you get one less of the front half of the trainer gallery in this set than you do uh, Brilliant Stars. So TG1 through TG11, Obama Snow all the way down to Hootoot, and then you have Starmie V all the way down to Ice Rider Calorie VMAX as the, or Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX as the back half, uh, but still equally as difficult to pull. Uh, 11.57 packs is what it's going to take to pull a specific, or a, a one, a single uh, trainer gallery from the front half. It's going to take you about 26 and a half packs, 26, 27 packs in order to pull uh, a specific, or I, I shouldn't say specific, uh, to pull a single uh, back half trainer gallery from Asteroids. If you're looking specifically for that Garchomp or for that Starmie, on average, it's going to take you 503 packs. 503 packs, again, still more difficult to pull than all the illustration rares uh, that we've talked about. Almost more difficult to pull than all the special illustration rares outside of special illustration rares from Paradox Rift, Temporal Forces, and Twilight Masquerade. So once Pokemon made the changes when it comes to pull rate data, all of a sudden then those special illustration rares became more difficult to pull than the back half of the trainer gallery. But the back half of the trainer gallery for all sets that aren't those three, all sets that aren't uh, Paradox Rift, Temporal Forces, uh, and Twilight Masquerade, the back half of the trainer gallery more difficult to pull than all those other sets. If we look at Lost Origin, very, very similar. A little bit over four hits per booster box when it comes to the trainer gallery. The majority of them made up of the front half, so you get about three. You get one from the back half, 1.36, so about 27 packs is what it's going to take you to pull a single uh, trainer gallery card from the back half. 476 packs to pull a specific unique one. So if you're hunting that Pikachu V or that Pikachu V Max, it's going to take you about 476 packs on average. Chances are you're going to pull duplicates or triplicates, uh, but you could pull duplicates or triplicates of the Pikachu V or the Pikachu V Max. Uh, more than likely, I mean, with my luck, I'll probably pull like, as you can see, um, 
six 13 opals in one pikachu v max that's just my luck uh silver tempest again very very similar 491 packs in order to pull a unique specific one like that rayquaza v max or that blaziken v max uh you still get four hits in your booster box it's going to be uh three of them made up from the front half uh one of them made up from the back half one out of 13 packs for the the front half is going to net you an, uh, a trainer gallery card from the front half uh 26 packs is going to net you a trainer gallery card from the back half if you want a specific one it's going to take you about 491 packs uh, for the back half, about 138 packs for the front half. Now things change with Crown Zenith. Crown Zenith is a little bit uh, a little bit different because Crown Zenith, the hit rates are much, much better. So uh, this is basically just the full pull rate breakdown. This is a little bit easier to read, uh, but the Galarian Gallery is also broken down into two different sections of the Galarian Gallery. So you have the Galarian Gallery front half of the booster box, which I think there's like 34 of, and then you have the Galarian Gallery back half, uh, which I think there's 32 of. And again, they're, they're very easily uh, identified by the texturing, uh, the very smooth border or very smooth texturing very smooth uh, pattern for the front half of the Galarian Gallery where you have that texturing on the Dark Rye V-Star, the Leafeon V-Star, uh, the Zero Aura V-Max cards like that. And then you have the gold, obviously, in the back half there, the, the Arceus, the Palkia, the Dialga, and the Giratina. Uh, so if we break that down by pull rate, so uh, it takes you 4.72 packs in order to pull the front half of the Galarian Gallery. Uh, if you multiply that times 34, I think it's 34 is the amount uh, from uh, the amount of cards in the front half of the Galarian Gallery. That means it's going to take you about 160 booster packs, and then you should pull 34 Galarian Gallery cards from the front half. You should have 34. Now, it could be duplicates of some or triplicates of some, and you might be missing some individuals, but a specific unique individual card from the glaring gallery in the front half about 160 the back half 293 so that's not that's not bad 293 means that it's a lot more difficult to pull an illustration rare in paradox rift uh, an illustration rare uh, in Palde Evolved, uh, basically the same pull rate for Illustration Rares in Scarlet and Violet Base and Temporal Forces and Twilight Masquerade. So the Eevee card from Twilight Masquerade that a lot of people are excited about is a little bit more difficult to pull than that Darkrai V-Star from Crown Zenith's Galarian Gallery. Uh, the gold cards, uh, however, are a little bit more difficult to pull. So you have to pull about, or open up about 582 packs will give you four gold cards. Uh, could be duplicates again, uh, but if you pull perfectly on the those four, uh, should, you should basically get them in 582 packs, which means a specific rarity pull rate is one out of 582 for Crown Zenith, which puts it uh, rarer than just about every card rarity in Scarlet and Violet outside of uh, a couple of the hyper rare categories and the special illustration rares from uh, Paradox Rift, Temporal Forces, and Twilight Masquerade. However, just a little bit more difficult to pull for those gold cards uh, than what we see from like the front half of Brilliant Star or the back half of Brilliant Stars Trainer Gallery. So that Umbreon VMAX from the Trainer Gallery of Brilliant Stars, uh, a little bit easier to pull. Not a lot though, a little bit easier to pull. Uh, almost two booster boxes worth, I guess. So that is that is substantial uh, more easy to pull than uh, a gold card from Crown Zenith. I thought this was all really, really interesting. You can let me know what you think in the comment section down below if you find this information valuable or not. But uh, po Pokemon has changed a lot. And it, it, it changed significantly when it comes to pull rate data. And this is very, very important data. I think when you talk about uh, opening up booster packs and wanting to understand the odds and things like that, what are the chances? Making the best calculated decisions uh, for your collection dollars. I think this is just really important information. So I hope you uh, I hope you like it. If you do, please hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a like, leave a comment. I hope I explained things. Again, I'm very sorry with how tough it was to read, uh, but ultimately thank you just for taking the time to sit here and listen to me ramble as this is the inner workings of my brain and I really appreciate uh, the, the feedback that you guys give, the, the continued discussion, things like that. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. We'll be back tomorrow with another video. Until next time, peace!